In this is the last video for this week, at least I think it's going to be the last one, uh, we look at how Roman expansion continues despite the huge costs and the huge casualties associated with the Punic Wars. In the worst time of the Punic Wars, the Second Punic War for the Romans, when Rome itself was under threat from Hannibal's army, uh, Philip V of Macedon had allied with the Carthaginians against the Romans. Uh, very unwise. Um, but again, in an attempt or in the hopes that he'd be able to carve out the sphere of influence for the Macedonians in Italy, again, creating this westward facing Macedonian empire when the Romans were defeated. However, of course, the Romans come back and then they come back for Philip and they defeat him at the Battle of Sinocephale, ending the war, but they do not occupy Macedon. Instead, they just require uh, payment. And they declared that the cities in Greece that were ruled by the Macedonians ever since the time of Alexander the Great would be free. This was a sign of the Romans' great admiration for Greek culture. However, uh, the Greek cities were now too small and too vulnerable, uh, really, to be able to rule themselves and maintain their independence. And so Antiochus III, who was the ruler of the Seleucid Empire, another one of the empires that succeeded uh, the empire of Alexander the Great, saw an opportunity to invade Greece. And so he invaded Greece, uh, and the Romans sent an army to defeat him. And they defeated Antiochus uh, by the year 188 BC. And again, the Romans didn't increase their land. They just demanded payment, and they demanded that Antiochus leave Anatolia. This led to the decline and fall of the Seleucids, although not through a Roman aggression, but through the arrival of a new uh, group of people called the Parthians, uh, again, another nomadic invasion from the north into the Middle East. Uh, the Parthians were devastating warriors. Seleucids were in decline. The Parthians established themselves as the, as the leading power in the Middle East. They would be a threat to the Romans in years to come. The Macedonians regained uh, their strength, and the Romans discovered that the new king, called Perseus, was planning to inspire the Celts to attack Rome. And if there's one thing you don't threaten the Romans with, it's inspiring the Celts to attack the city of Rome. The memories of the sack of the Gauls still very powerful, and um, the uh, Romans go to war in all seriousness in 171. Uh, they're stronger, but it still defeats them. It takes them three years to defeat the Macedonians. But it proved unequivocally that the Roman legion was now a more effective fighting force than the Macedonian phalanx that it had conquered all the way to India. The Romans divided Macedon into four kingdoms and were increasingly realizing that no one could resist them. They forced the Seleucids uh, to leave off their attempted expansion into Egypt. When the Carthaginians attempted to expand their territory into Africa, the Romans went to war against them in the Third Punic War, and this time it was all over for Carthage. Uh, Rome is so much more powerful than Carthage now, and so Carthage is taken, and so the Carthaginians were really just trying to level the scales by increasing their land in Africa, not trying to avoid going up against the Romans. But the Romans always remember the threat uh, the Carthaginians had, faked, had posed and how close they came to destruction. And so now they come in, they fight against the Carthaginians for three years, they completely destroy uh, the city of Carthage. They sow salt in the ground to prevent people from settling in this area again, prevent the land from being used to cultivate crops and food. And North Africa becomes a new province of Rome. And we now begin to say that Rome is building an empire. The Romans have lost any kind of reluctance uh, to take on new territory. And instead of kind of extending the patron-client relationship of their society, which we talked about last week, we talked about how this was a benchmark of Roman society. And there's something at that relationship in the way Rome is establishing its provinces. So we're not going to say that we rule over you. We're not making you uh, a slave or a servant, but we're expecting you to be loyal to us. That's kind of the way Rome's relationships with provinces like Sicily and areas of Greece have been. And now Rome is making this transition to being a state of uh, conquest. Uh, so now they've conquered Greece, they've conquered North Africa, they conquer Anatolia, and in 121 they seize uh, southern Gaul. In 133 they complete the conquest of Spain, and now they've established themselves as a full-scale Mediterranean empire. And this is going to dramatically change Roman economy and society. For a start, the Romans now needed an effective monetary system. Uh, if you move forward to the next slide, uh, you can see that the, this was the period during which Roman coinage was introduced. 
Uh, we start to see uh, the development of a sophisticated fiduciary system uh, with government loans. And we start to see the development of more public projects. A couple of the more famous ones are the creation of aqueducts to bring fresh water to Rome. This shows how the Roman population is expanding beyond what the water supply in the area can provide. The population of Rome this time is reaching uh, a number of about a million. We see that uh, temples are being remodeled. New legal buildings, uh, local courts called basilicas, were being built. And uh, we see more and more ambitious building projects in Rome and throughout the empire. We also see the creation of the famous Roman roads. Uh, these roads were a model of ancient engineering, uh, and they were enabled the Romans to connect their expansive empire and to govern their expansive empire uh, increasingly efficiently. Uh, so this is kind of the background to the way Roman society is changing as a result of these conquests. We see that the Roman government is becoming more powerful. The Roman government is spending more money on developing the infrastructure of the empire and is also bringing in the revenues as a conquest state that is going to enable it to do so. Okay, that's it for this week. I'll see you in uh, week 11.